What if this happens? What if that happens? What if that doesn't happen? And on and on it goes. They consistently worry themselves in circles. If you struggle with the fear of the unknown, you cannot beat yourself up. It's a very common thing. I get it. We all get it. So if you want to begin to grow, you've got to put something out here that you can't reach easily, that has got to make you stretch, got to make you jump for it, got to make you get back a little bit and dig in so that you can take a leap for it. And maybe you jump up there and you miss it and you extend your knees and you come back again and you bust your lip next time. But you keep on and through that process, you learn how to leap higher. You start challenging yourself to dig deeper and then you discover some things about you that you don't know right now, some talents that you have in you that you didn't know that you can do. I started out just talking to kids. And now I'm speaking at corporations. Now I'm traveling. I didn't know I can do this, but had I not given myself a chance. I'm afraid what's going to happen when I fail. What are my friends going to think when I'm coming back empty-handed? What am I going to think of myself? No matter what. Don't allow other things or people or circumstances to determine what your reaction is going to be. You've got to learn how to observe it. Just stand back and watch what's going on and choose not to buy into it. So know what your mission is. Know what your intent as the commander of your life. Know what your intent is and then fight with everything you've got. Listen, y'all, we have control of our minute, our hour, our day, our week, our month, and our year. Stop running around being on the receiving end of whatever people want to dump on you. You showed up. You accepted that invite. You invited these people to your house. You're in a relationship with that man. You're in a relationship with that woman. That's you. So how do you feel at the end of your night? The next thing is, see yourself there. How will you feel once you get there? What will the experience be like for you? What will be different? What kind of person do you have to become in order to get there? Visualize yourself there. Living the experience, you want to see yourself beyond your circumstances. You got a challenge, see yourself beyond your challenge. See yourself with the challenge already resolved. And knowing that all is well, seeing yourself in control and in charge of your destiny, being healthy and happy. I'm telling you, man, being successful is a mental condition. You can all mentally condition yourself to being successful. Are you? It's your mind. You in control of it. It's, it's times I felt like giving up. I mean, no matter who you are, if you have a goal in life, everybody has a turn back moment. Everybody has a crossroad. If if you haven't been at it, it's coming. You can either decide to continue or to quit. It is important in the area of motivating yourself, it's important to know why you're doing it. Because that mind will say, why bother? Why go through all this? This is too hard. No, throw in the towel. It's not worth it. Has it ever said that to you before? Here's how you can handle that. Here's how you override that. Write down five reasons why you deserve it. Why do you deserve what you want? Why you? Why do you deserve it? What meaning and value will it bring to your life? What's so different about you that you deserve your goal or this goal? And when you write down those five reasons, when you have some down moments and you're going to have them, when that conversation starts talking to you and it's going to talk to you, what you will do is you can pull that out and read it and it will build you up. It will be your rod and your staff to comfort you through some challenging moments because you're going to have some. Life will knock you between the eyes. 
It will catch you on the blind side, come out of nowhere, stuff you can't anticipate. That will knock the wind out of you. You want to give up. That's why it's important for you to work on yourself, listening to tapes, building yourself up, talking to yourself with power, feeling, and conviction, building yourself up day in and day out. The next thing is that whatever you do, you want to develop technical mastery. You want to be the best at what you do. You want to master it. See, part of, of, of self-motivation is you've got to find something that gives you a strong sense of competence. Well, you become known for that. You develop a reputation of being good at doing that. You set some high personal standards for yourself. You're not competing with anybody else. You're just unfolding yourself to be the best person that you could be. That you want to give the best quality service that you can give because that is a statement about who you are. The other thing that's the key to self-motivation is recognize the fact that you're going to get into some slumps. Recognize the fact that you're going to encounter a great deal of failure in life. It goes with the territory. But in the face of that, you want to be relentless. The next thing is that when you want something out of life, you've got to be willing to go into action. Don't wait around for things to be just right. Don't wait for things to be perfect. Don't wait for the ideal situation. It will never be ideal. There will always be a reason. Well, as soon as the children grow up, as soon as I pay my bills, or as soon as I get my divorce, kind, as soon as I get enough money together, do what you can, where you are with what you have, and never be satisfied. A lot of people never take a chance in life. They don't want to take any chances. They want the situation to be ideal. See, that's not walking by faith. That's walking by sight. If I can see it, I'll do it. No, 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 no. A lot of people say, if I can see it, I'll believe it. No, 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 no. If you believe it, you can see it. You survived every hater. You survived all the evictions. You survived the firings. You survived all the tell you, no, we ain't hiring. You survived all the trouble you ever been in. Your survival rate is 100%. 100%. All you got to do is start changing the way you think. The lessons I learned out of my failures probably are a lot more valuable than if I had just made a successful decision and moved on. So remember this, you don't see things in your life as they are. You see things in life as you are. And so the more you alter you, the more you begin to see things differently. What's is amazing about this is we control who we are by what we think about. Think about this just for a second. Wherever you're sitting watching this, the chair that you're sitting in, if you're sitting in a chair, if you're driving in a car and you're listening to this, that seat you're in started in someone's mind as a thought, right? Every detail of it, the fabric, the cushions, the way it's structured, every single piece of that started in someone's mind as a thought and then became a reality by putting out the pieces together. See, everything in life is that way as well. It always begins with a thought. Life is worthwhile if you stay. You've got to learn to stay. Now, you don't have to stay forever. Just stay till you see it through. A guy builds a foundation and then he wanders off somewhere and builds another foundation. He's got these foundations scattered all across the country. I mean, no walls, no roofs, just a bunch of foundations. Not a good reputation. Stay. You don't have to stay forever. Just stay to finish something. Don't fall into the trap of less than refined sophistication. Stay till it's over. The fourth if that makes life worthwhile, one is if you learn, two is if you try, three is if you stay, and fourth if that makes life worthwhile is if you care. Caring is a unique human experience that is so vital and so powerful and so all-encompassing and so far-reaching. If you care at all, you'll get some results. If you care enough, you can get magnificent results. 
To lead a life worth living, you've got to learn, you've got to try, you've got to stay, and you've got to care. Taking responsibility for your own life. Taking responsibility for whatever happens to you. Knowing that you have consciously made the decisions that are now affecting you. Knowing that what is happening now, today, is the direct result of your activity, what you did yesterday. Self-reliance is basically counting on yourself. Now, being self-reliant doesn't mean you can't work with others or trust others. Self-reliance means counting on yourself, trusting yourself, being confident with yourself, being responsible to yourself, trusting your own instincts, trusting the conclusions that you have developed from your study of experiences and philosophies, taking the credit that is due you, learning from the mistakes that you have made, being self-reliant. Gestalt psychologists give an example of being self-reliant. They say that you're responsible for getting caught in the rain. They say that by deciding not to carry an umbrella every day, you have made the decision to endure an occasional drenching. Translation, by not being prepared, you make the choice of getting caught in some of life's unpleasant circumstances. Be they rain, failures, economic losses, relationship losses, professional losses, personal losses. By not being prepared, thinking ahead, it's your choice. Now here's the other side of it. By being prepared, you increase your chances of success. You increase the likelihood. By being prepared, you increase your chances of success of seizing opportunities when they come your way, of being ready within yourself to take advantage of once-in-a-lifetime situations. Some people tend to blame others for their mistakes, blame others for their failures. Somebody says, it's not my fault the report isn't done, so-and-so didn't do their part. Of course it's your fault. It's your report too. It's your responsibility to... everyone you delegated work to does their part. Now you can't control what others around you do, but it's in your own best self-interest, your enlightened self-interest, that you stay on top of things, especially if it's going to affect your future. You think your boss cares that John didn't do his part? You think he sees John as the bad guy? Of course not. All he sees is that the report isn't done, bottom line. Be responsible for the things that affect you. You can make sure you're more responsible by checking in with those people who are working with you, the people who make up your team. You can be more responsible by saying, hey John, how are you doing with your part? Do you need some help? Can we put somebody else in here to help you finish? Now if John consistently doesn't handle his part, you've got to replace John. If he isn't doing his share, you've got to find somebody that will. Or what? It will negatively affect you. You can't wake up in the morning that the project is due hoping and wishing that John has done his part. No, you've got to be responsible because it's going to affect your career too. Now, my approach to my better future very early on in my career was to just go through the day with my fingers crossed. And I used to say something like, I sure hope things will change for the better. Then here's what I found out. They're not going to change. Somebody says, well then, how will my life ever change? Answer, when you change. When you change, when you get better, it'll get better. If you change, It'll all change. Don't put it on someone else. Hope that someone else will change it for you. 
Take responsibility for yourself. Take personal responsibility. Money with that body, the more repetitive it is that you place yourself in those things, those places, and those situations, the more your brain becomes familiar with it, the more it gravitates towards it. You can't think about it once. It's the repetition over and over again. Your brain begins to think, oh, I belong here. We belong here. You actually eventually convince yourself, literally, that you belong in your dreams by the repetitive and specific thinking and visions of them over and over again. And don't be disturbed because no one else can see it. That's not unusual. That is ordinary. But because you want some different kind of results in your life, you've got to be willing to be unreasonable. If you want unreasonable results in your life, you've got to be willing to be unreasonable. Part of being unreasonable, you don't judge according to appearances. Part of being unreasonable, you can see it because you believe it. Most people won't do that. One of the keys to self-motivation that empowers you is that you want to find a cause larger than yourself. Find something that you can contribute to. Find something that you can make a difference because you can. Part of what feeds your larger vision, part of what gives you a reason for being, part of what gives you your life is being able to give something back. Once you develop that, that special sense of mission, and that's what you develop when you're part of a larger cause than yourself, it drives you. You don't need an alarm clock to get up in the morning. You have special power. You go places and folk will like to be around you. They will know there's something different about you. When you go in, they'll say, hey, that's somebody important. I want to know who you are. I just want to be near you. That energy that you have, that consciousness that you will embody, will affect everybody around you. You must be willing to do the things today others won't do. In order to have the things tomorrow, others won't have. That's why the Book of Life said, the road to life is straight and narrow, and few there be that find it, because few there be that are willing to do the things today others won't do. In order to have the things tomorrow, others won't have. What are the things that others won't do? Number one, make discipline a major force in your life. Socrates said the undisciplined life is an insane life. The road to life is straight and narrow because few there be that are willing to discipline themselves. Here's something else that most people won't do. Make it okay to fail. A lot of people, 85% of people, allow their fear of failure to outweigh their desire to succeed. 